All right, let's deploy this to the Azure App Service. And before I do anything, I'm going to go ahead and commit this, or rather push this to Git, and I'm going to call this Azure Flask YT. I'm going to keep it private for right now. All right, and then if I look at it on GitHub, and here we can see that it has been committed to GitHub. Now I'm going to use GitHub here again in a minute, but first I need to create a new Azure web app, and I'm going to do that through Visual Studio Code. You could do this through the portal, you could do it with a command line, but I like to use Visual Studio Code whenever I can because it gives you the options that you're going to use a lot instead of every single option. So first of all, going to need an extension here and going to need, there's actually several extensions that I'm going to need throughout the series of videos, but the one that I'm going to do, I'm going to install here is this group or package uh, called Azure Tools. And this is actually 12 different extensions. I'm not gonna use all of them, but I'll use uh, some of them and they're all worth having eventually. So Azure App Service is the one that I'm going to be using here. I've already got this installed and I've signed into my Azure account. And so you'll see this new icon over here. And you'll see that there are sections for different services. And the one I want is App Service. And here's my subscription. And I've already got a couple made. Now, there are several different ways that you can create a new web app here. And one is by clicking this button that's going to make a lot of assumptions for you. You can also right click on the subscription and say, create new web app, which is the same as clicking that button before, or create a new web app advanced, which is the one that I like to use. Now, you could also go to the command palette and uh, say um, app service advanced, advanced, there we go, right there. And this will prompt you to uh, do several things. So what did I do before? I think I did Azure Flask YT. Azure Flask YT. And it's going to ask me what resource group I want to use. I've already got one here that I'm going to use. And then a stack. Use Python. A region. Um, an, an app service plan. I've already got one here. And then I'll just use the same insights. And this will not take that long to create the new web app because I've already got all that. I've already got the app plan and the insights plan and everything uh, created. But if you're doing all this from scratch, it could take a couple of minutes. All right, with this done, I'll close it. Now, there are a couple of things that I could do here. First of all, I could right click on uh, Azure Flask YT and tell it I want to deploy. And it's going to ask me for the folder that I want to deploy. And here I've got the I've got the application in this folder. I'm actually not going to do that. And the reason why is because this again makes a lot of assumptions. So one of the assumptions that it makes is that your application is or, or the app the Flask application itself, what we're calling app is in a file named app.py. Anything else, you've got to do a custom command. And for that, you're going to have to actually go into the portal. So I'm going to open up the portal here, and I'm going to want to go to configuration. And here I've got some things that's already made, done for me, but I want to go into general settings, and I need to provide a custom startup command. Now recall that the Flask app itself is imported to a is imported into a file or module named startup named startup and then that inside of launch.json we specified the Flask app environment variable as startup app. We're basically going to do the same thing except using this custom command. So I'll go over here and the custom command is always going to be g unicorn bind to all addresses timeout 600 
and then you're going to give it the path to the app which in this case will be startup.app now I'll save this it'll restart the application which is just fine because nothing's been deployed all right with that done can actually deploy the application I'm going to go to the deployment center and it's going to ask me what what source I want to use to get the um, to get the code from now I'm going to select github and it's, I'm already logged in with my account I'm going to select an organization and then the repository which will be Azure Flask YT and then a branch which will be master and then what this is going to do this is going to set up github actions and I can preview this github actions file over here but when I save this I guess is it setting up the github action and if I go back to my github repository and click on actions you'll see that a new action has been added here and I can watch the and I can watch the progress and it looks like I forgot to do something here it looks like I forgot to install uh, create a requirements text file and sure enough I did okay so that's easy enough to fix I'll open up a terminal here and I'll say Python dash M pip freeze and send that to a file called requirements dot text and there's my requirements dot text file and now if I go back over to git and say added requirements file commit that and sync it and what this will do is it'll actually automatically trigger a new job and so now let's see if I made any mistakes okay it's installing all of my dependencies and now it's moving on to the deployment the first time this can take a while all right the job is complete so if I go back over to the overview and go to browse then and also the first time this can take a little longer too when because it's waiting for a new instance to warm up however there is the index page and if I go to slash profiles I'll see the profiles index and then I can actually go back to Visual Studio Code and I want to copy this three hashtags to make a new request say get and slash API slash profiles send the request and we get a 200 and there's our profile resource now there's actually one thing that I left out is that's listing the profiles here and this is a good excuse to actually show what happens when you when you make a new push to Git, it will automatically redeploy the application. Now, if you just deploy from here, it won't do that. You would have to manually redeploy each time. So I'll go back over here to the app and recall that in the, AP, not in the API, but rather in the profiles, recall that we use the keyword argument profiles and this is going to send the uh, the data in the database to the template itself and that template is in profiles index and so all I need to do now is create a uh, unordered list and then say for profile in profiles and in that for I'll just create a list item and I'll say profile get the last name and then profile and get the first name oops there we go now if I save this 
And while I'm at it, I'm actually going to go into the API. Let's go over here and I can copy some of copy this. Go over to the API profile and import JSON and create my DB and instead here I'll just return sorted DB and then the key to sort on have a lambda that returns the last name okay and now I should be able to go over here and run this locally let's open it up let's go to profiles there we go and then if I go over here to my requests and get this one I'll see all of them in JSON so that uh, that works now what I'm going to do is I'll say uh, added profile display to now nah, just added profile display for API and um, profiles commit yes now let's sync and let's go over to the github profile or github repo and you'll see that a new one has been added a new action has been added for this particular commit and I'll go ahead and speed the video up through this so we don't watch it again okay the deployment has finished so I'll go back to the portal say I want to browse okay there's my index see what the profiles looks like there are my profiles and if I go back to my request.http and ask for this one here that's that's on that's on Azure I'll get back the JSON so in the next video we can go ahead and start building out the application and making it somewhat useful